So we could just start it right off. Last time uh, I was on your guys' podcast, um, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but uh, we talked about uh, myself and how I got started in One Hive um, and, you know, kind of the story behind it. Um, so I guess we need to hear about, uh, about how you guys did everything for options, or not options, uh, Shinedown. And how you guys, first of all, found each other and then did what you did. I think this is, uh, how, how long, uh, how, how much time do we have? How long do we have? <laughs> I mean, uh, t Wells is trying hey. to keep the streams under, uh, Just under, under three, three hours. hours. So uh, we, have, we have two <laughs> hours we're, we're, remaining. We're not even having yes. in the, in the hour two. So yes. we want that origin story. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I, w I was born in uh, Avesta in uh, Sweden. No, okay. <laughs> 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 Obviously, it's not a big place. I think you doxed yourself now, man. Yeah. All right. Find me. Well, um, I can start. Why? So, me and Badgerton, we know each other for crypto. Uh, so we're we're in real life friends as well. Um, but, um, so. I got introduced to Web3 and crypto in general um, around 2017. And I was uh, doing an ex exchange for my studies and I ran into some, uh, some interesting people that talked about crypto, and Bitcoin. And uh, this was during the ICO boom, I think in the late 2017. And at that time, I, I didn't think too much of it. Um, I I wasn't at a time uh, or place personally that I would you know, look into it, but I knew that uh, some of my friends were were making uh, some some good money and also had a lure to it. So I started looking into it, and as time went by, I mostly started looking at Bitcoin as a uncorrelated asset to. Uh, to stocks and other kinds of financial investments. And then, you know, one thing led to another. I started to talk to my friends that were into crypto and we, they introduced me to DeFi and smart contracts and everything that is around Ethereum. And then, of course, you know, I think this is something that isn't unique for me, but once people get introduced to the rabbit hole, they tend to go down that rabbit hole um that of course was the same for me um and um got more and more in introduced involved uh learned more and more and got int introduced to people and um and then i we uh in Badgerton met had some other friends that started one hive but maybe uh, one hive sorry shine down okay, i think i can i can give you some uh, context here sure. Yes, please, Badgerton. Uh, that's Add my. Uh, yeah, I will give you some context from my point of view here. Uh, I was also in this uh, Portugal place uh, on an exchange where me and uh, Drunk Boy had a really good time, got to know each other, got to know ourselves uh, a little bit better. And I had already bought my first, uh, not my first Bitcoin, but like parts of it in order to buy some uh, good drugs uh, in Sweden. So I was uh, I was aware about like Bitcoin and I was aware about the, the potential and the narratives uh, because I was studying uh, finance at the time or like engineering, industrial engineering management. And I had already kind of realized that the system that we were already in was kind of, uh, I wouldn't say flawed, but like uh, impossible basically. Um, and looking for uh, alternatives when so you're, um, you're talking about the fiat fiat system yeah the fiat system i think this was like old my first day at university back in 2000 what was this 13 a really old like childhood friend of mine just showed me a documentary end of the road i think it was called and it just blew my mind uh, they explained the finance in such an easy easy way and it was just obvious to me that okay so this is kind of a Ponzi scheme and I don't know it's like I was pretty neutral about it it's just like ah oh, finally I understand uh, more things now than I did before 
Um, so that was kind of where I, I was really interested in Bitcoin from that perspective of how can we, how can we build uh, a financial system that is not based on um, like fiat currencies and like central banking. Uh, of course, the rabbit hole is like so, so deep and there are so many other things that, that are interesting. Uh, that was my first realization that, oh, okay, th there might be something here. But I didn't share it and did like with Drunk Boy, the things that we are good at is like shooting the shit, go, going out, meeting people. And we were both having careers, whatever you want to call it. In uh, for me, I started working as a trainee for a bank. Uh, so this wasn't something that we spoke about uh, that often or like you, you basically don't mention this, that there is a complete parallel system being built out. Uh, you're focusing on fintechs and like, oh, how can we increase, you know, the savings and stuff like this. Uh, and I actually remember the first day when something like Shinedow was created because this was a few days before, uh, after New Year's, I think, yeah, I guess almost a year ago. Um, and then the, the guys that we met in Portugal that we kept contact with for other reasons, because we just, you know, like hanging out with each other. We, uh, we were all kind of uh, feeling, not down, but disconnected in COVID times, you know. So it f felt really nice just meeting each other again, even if it was digitally. Uh, and we had a digital hoon, like a, a joint session. Uh, just smoking a, a joint, talking, and then some person like mentioned, uh, like, have you seen, like, have you heard anything about crypto? And everyone just started like, Rah! you know, this is such a thing. And everyone had been doing their own research, like diving deep by, um, by themselves. Um, and at this point, I think by, one, um, by themselves. Uh, one of uh, one of us, and I think I hear myself uh, here as well, or is it? Yeah. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Yeah, so one of our... <laughs> one of, outside of Discord as well. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, very strange when you smoke too much hoons. <laughs> yeah, but one so, of our friends, uh, he, was, he was into uh, the, the startup world. So while we were doing like banking and stuff like this, he was just going startup world. Um, so he was like, yeah, I'd rather do this type of startup than, than continuing like this program that I'm into. And he was in... Uh, Germany, like a startup hub, uh, you know, meeting all these people, but it didn't really feel passionate so much about the ideas that they were uh, going, trying to fulfill. So you and Drunk Boy um, pretty much were into crypto, but didn't talk about it because he thought it was like weird. And then all of a sudden you guys were like, okay, let's talk about it. And then let's, let's synergize. Let's figure out a way to do something new or yeah. like, I Kinda. Like, I think the you guys, group of you guys were both in the same era, but like never spoke about it. So when did you guys yeah. speak about it? Like we had other at the start of COVID topics that we talked about, and other interests that we talked about in our, our group of uh, friends. Uh -huh. It kind of once that subject came up, it it became so obvious that <laughs> all of us talked uh, thought about it and investigated it separately. Um, so we, we thought, you know, I think in the beginning, it, it was partly, as, as Badgerton said, you know, let's, uh, let's, try, to, let's uh, try to do something in this space. But also, um, it is nice to manifest ideas, and it's very nice to, to do it with friends, in a way. And um, that, uh, I think that was at least uh, the seed shine down and uh and we've been, we've been uh slowly building this then i think but worth adding is the the our friend uh from uh from the startup scene he he had been involved in some projects before he had met uh some uh, uh what do you call it he have found some obstacles uh yeah. with the uh, how can you create something that is not dependent on the old system? How can you create a, um, a product in DeFi without having to reach out to VCs? How can you build a community? And can we somehow um, align people's interests in a way uh, so that regular people can still be part of this, just the same way that we were, uh, without having... Um, 
um, like intermediaries, basically. So the first, I think, uh, way to describe what we were aiming yeah, for in the beginning was a decentralized Y Combinator for the ones that are interested in like the startup uh, scene. Uh, where we could have cohorts of uh, teams that could build something together for a short period of time, and then people uh, could, Sorry, like regular people. Uh, ah, okay, so um, like decentralized Y Combinator, we could have cohorts of teams building, building product, and then people from the community being their first users, uh, giving feedback, uh, spreading the word, this kind of Do situation. Yeah, I can hear everybody okay. Dash, oh, you having some... my audio that cut out? <laughs> ah, perfect. So just, just, just a reminder that, yeah, so if you have Twitch open, um, make sure you have that on mute or you might hear yourself double. Um, but as far as sound issues, Ooh. is anybody else experiencing any any problems? Anybody on Twitch, leave a, leave a note in chat if you haven't, if you can't hear somebody. I'll try to solve it. But we, I think we you, you were chatting about sort of this feedback loop almost if you're able to launch DAO concepts from the community and then the community is their users and they're providing feedback um please continue yeah <laughs> yeah i guess i guess uh, that's basically like that was the 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 first vision and instead of uh, I, i'm used to working in a big company where you would need a you always need a business case and you need to give you know uh, sheets and sheets and sheets of paper of how how great your idea is but in this case we we just didn't have the, enough information we the best way to learn was just to start doing so that was what we did we started talking to people that were in the space uh, interested in in the same kind of things investors builders and we tried to gather them and collect their feedback. And after a while, we had what we thought a good first uh, MVP or a first version of something that would uh, could become a nice community for people who are interested in building or um, like investing in products in to accelerate like the uh, what do you call it the transition that as I see it to Web three. Everyone has a bit like different uh, ways. Like some people think it's a really good way to avoid getting scammed or like helping people to avoid scams because you're stronger as a group. There's uh, more people that are able to do research uh, on projects. So it's kind of a, a cushion to have if you are like, new to the space. Uh, maybe not are do you, you don't. Out or is it my volume? <laughs> <laughs> is it my audio again? Would you drunk boy? Maybe if you say something, Dosh can hear you. Can you hear me, Dosh? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can uh... hear you. Wow. Okay, but so take take box over. And then all of a sudden, it it just dies out. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Just oh, you guys have that issue or no? I'm continuing uh, the ramblings of of my dear pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no worries. <laughs> um, no, it, you know, it it in the end, it it started exactly as Badgerton said. We reached out to other people and we said, you know, we, we see this and that, do you, do you share the same view? And it was mostly related to trying to build a, a project from scratch, trying to, you know, get all the pieces in place. In essence, we had the same challenge ourselves and we realized, okay, but this can't only be us having this problem or having this challenge. And the more people we talked to, the the more it became clear that all right, it there there might be some um, there might be some something here, and and we at least in in the beginning. So VC capital is is not necessarily bad. But if one is trying to create a protocol or create a community in crypto, uh, there's a potential conflict of interest when you're having an incorporated entity in the traditional words um, with stocks and stakeholders. Then you also have the community who has the governance token. And um, we thought that eh, we could be, we, 
could most likely uh, do something here in terms of replicating a VC. Because what does a VC, it does many things, of course, but venture capital, it facilitates connections. It helps to identify gaps and helps projects to how to address these gaps, be it in product development, marketing, whatever. And then it, they also help with capital. And these three areas is something you don't need a venture capitalist firm for that. You can have a community to do that. Um, and that is what we're what we're doing and continuing to try to do as good as possible. I dig that. That's awesome. I, uh... You know, I, I wanted to know, like, do you guys get any like heck for being like VCs? Like, I mean, the crypto space is always, you know, kind of looking down on VCs and saying like, you know, it's, it's makes it centralized, but you guys are like making a DAO, which is decentralized and also a VC. Like, does, mm -hmm. do people understand that what you guys are doing? Like, or do you guys get, you know, some, some hackles about being a VC? We're, we're not getting heckled. I wish. Um, <laughs> I wish we would, uh, because then I guess we would be, would be more in the mainstream if people come in and, and try to shit on us. Um, but no, we haven't received that so much. And I think one of the, not uh, the sole reason, the reason, but an attributing factor in, and this is, at least in my opinion, that we do have investors, of course, in, in our DAO that is um, part of the DAO to invest in, in the projects that we take through the DAO. But the majority of Shine DAO are builders and contributors uh, that want to help others succeed and want to help contribute other projects. Um, we We are not... Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, resemble us you with, you know, a, a mid, grandpa mid shop. Can... We lost uh, Badgerton now instead. No, nah, but I'm not saying anything. No. Make, yeah, it makes sense. I'll, I'll, like pass the, yeah. I'll pass the mic over to him oh. very soon. No, but, <laughs> I um, I here, right. my audio here, guys. Um, can you guys give me a second here? Josh, you want to hop off and on and just see what happens? You know, yeah. if you like, hop yeah, off the stage and run back. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can do some small talk here. I'm very good at small talk. That's what I do <laughs> every day in my work. First, we talk about COVID, and we talk about the weather. We um, had a storm so here. We had a storm here in Sweden. Uh, otherwise, you can talk about sports. Always good, uh, especially national sports, like handball. I guess. <laughs> Anyone into handball? <laughs> no, but I, I guess you never know. It's like hockey, but you're running. Where are pass. you from, T. Wells? I'm from I'm from the U.S. Uh, nice. The yeah, Eastern U.S. So, mm. um, yeah, it's uh, it's cool, man. I, I mean, what's up? No storms. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, a little bit. Of, yeah. I was oh no, we lost T. Wells. Finally, as well. only us. <laughs> yeah, Welcome Discord is the definitely. Discord is definitely acting up a bit here. The good news is that I'm pulling everything into Twitch. So as long as y'all are speaking, everybody should be able to hear you. Yeah, okay. we're, we're speaking. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's just so I think hopefully it should be, should be, should be smooth. I was going to be like, I was going to be like, yeah, you know, we got about a foot of snow here. And then I was like, but I'm speaking with people that are going to laugh in my fucking face and they should. <laughs> it's like, look, I lived in Texas for 10 years. So a foot of snow is making me shit myself. It's okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm like, this is cold now <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> and then I get on a call with people from Sweden. I'm like, I'm just going to shut the hell up. I'm not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> we would belittle you. We would say, ho, 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 but here in Sweden, yeah. we get meters of snow. You call that a snow? You... <laughs> I figured as much. Yeah. That's what, that, that, that's I, what the Canadians I say. Bought, I bought a shovel, <laughs> damn it. I bought a snow shovel for the first time. There you go. <laughs> Ah, you don't have the electric. Ah, okay. We have the electric. See, my yeah. mother grew up in a place where they had a legit snowblower. Yeah, where they had a gas-powered snowblower. So she still, yeah, still tells yeah, stories uh, about yeah. that when I'm, like, complaining about shoveling. <laughs> <laughs> That's the proper shit, you know. When you have... Then you know that you, you're 
I'm meaning business if you have a snowblower <laughs> at your house, you know. And, and a specific reserve of gas for it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You don't have a power generator, but you do have a snowblower. <laughs> Priorities here. Yeah, you need different equipment for different seasons. It's uh it's not fun. We were me and Drunk by were discussing the the apocalypse or like post apocalypse which uh, skills you would uh, rather have. Like mm -hmm. what's the most useful? Snowblower might be a skill <laughs> <laughs> for the winter. <laughs> it wasn't impossible. One of the guys came, he said he wanted a double jump. Like, you know, you're having Mario. That would be a good skill. Or infinite sprints. <laughs> no, we got infinite sprints, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I think the ultimate skill would be a helicopter pilot because mm. you can just get into a helicopter, fly around, go wherever you want. How about a uh, diver? A diver? <laughs> you can dive everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you need to be a diver, though, if there is an apocalypse? For all the treasures. Why would you need to dive? All the treasures on the bottom of the floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. How are you going to kill me if I'm, uh, you know, 100 Underwater. meters down? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Very clever. Until you come up, haven't you seen the seals in the North Pole? They get fucked <laughs> by the bears. Uh, maybe the bears are dead. True. Things are kind of apocalypse. I don't know. It is an apocalypse like after all. Yeah. I don't know. Would you be safe? From water from this <laughs> no, the zombie movies ever have like Olympian levers swimming zombies? Yeah. I think true. that's a that's a niche of zombie movies we haven't seen like the super <laughs> swimmer zombies <laughs> just when you thought you could escape oh my God. <laughs> in the water <laughs> kind of we're on a boat and then you see someone's like doing the butterfly you know just fucking coming at you i should I have uh, a zombie coming at you yeah. Yeah. it's cool because they can dislocate their swimmer zombie like fast, michael yeah. phelps style zombie <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, yeah, the helicopter sounds like a good choice now, Dosh. Yeah, I'm telling you, helicopter, just fly around. Unless everything is ocean and you can't land, then yeah. Ah, yeah. Or even the, the sky is ocean. Is ocean. On the <laughs> helicopter and it floats. Oh, yeah, you could. But how are you going to refuel it? Like, you need That's an offshore problem, rig. That's Dosh. I was just about to ask that. Like, you need you an fly... offshore rig and you need to be able to process it right, right on the rig. <laughs> Couldn't you just have a uh, engineering swim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have uh, two helicopters. One to fill up uh, the first helicopter, there you go. and then you need a third for the second helicopter. You can also <laughs> you can also see you know there's a in Alaska they have a certain uh, propeller plane that's like constructed to make very short uh, takeoffs and landings. And uh, for the One Hive community that is listening, if you want to look at something else after this wonderful podcast, you can look at, like, they have competitions in how short you can land. And they're, they're like, eight, nine meters runway, which is 30 feet of a runway, and they can land the plane. So maybe, uh, I don't know if it's going to help with the gas uh, situation, but. Uh... Do you know that? Yeah, anyway. um, we might even have solar powered or some kind of different kind of energy combustion um, yeah. engines uh, by that time. So you, you, maybe we don't need to refuel in. Maybe know. wind for the helicopter. Yeah, wind. <laughs> they already have the propeller. Starting an online <laughs> Clever. Op open ocean's always windy, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. where they put the wind, uh, what do you call them? The meals. Wind yeah. meals. Uh, so I got my I think my audio is good now we, we can uh, go back to our, uh, <laughs> yeah so this was basically our vision and we thought how can we get here so we wanted to gather some people who share the same uh, fears of the zombie apocalypse water style what, the water apocalypse yeah the water apocalypse this, this has been a long plan in the making I'm, I'm happy that we're finally here to discuss the zombie apocalypse we had to create a DAO for us to have this conversation. Yeah. Execution is not really my thing. I'm more into the <laughs> strategy. You're more of the long-term 
<laughs> yeah, I look at ma macro. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right. Tell us a little I, bit about I actually the, did the have... Actually, go ahead. Sorry. That's yes, a good question. It's a very good segue. Um, the two projects. We are currently incubating um, DeFi Options DAO. And we have preci precisely um, started to assist Cassandra DAO. And DeFi Options DAO is a... The V1 is a decentralized options platform. On Polygon. On Polygon. Um, and um, we've helped them more or less from even before it was a white paper. We picked up the, the core developer and then we've been helping them from, from building it from scratch, more or less. Very, very nice group of people, very smart. So the V1 is a options uh protocol but um there are there are rumors about uh, some other shenanigans going on in the v2 but um i i'm not smart enough to uh to explain it in a uh come down form i'm a bit smarter a about it. so i can say i can say this how about if you could have a stable coin on chain that is not backed uh, like pegged to the dollar or backed by any of the like fiat currencies uh, could that be possible and uh, how so it, would it be like uh like badger does btc uh the dig token uh no uh this would be uh, i think it's uh, let's see if if i'm uh, giving everyone like uh, if i'm saying this right but credit based so, oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's um, there's a project on Elastos called Creda. Ah, uh, yeah, something similar. I don't know if you yeah. guys have read about that. No idea, but I will. I will send our. We have one of the core developers for DeFi Options DAO. He's really, really, really trying. Like his his game is just trying to not be dependent on like tether or any of those kind of stable coins he wants to find something that is a bit more like uh, decentralized long-term viable where uh yeah basically tether but decentralized is something like this and i think he would be happy wh whoever kind of creates it he's happy he's he's not doing this for for the fame and the glory and the protocol he, he just sees a need and he wants to feel that so I will send yeah, them to the Creda team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell them to go to uh, Creda. Um, they are part of the Elastos team, and I believe the Elastos Foundation is behind the Creda uh, project. And I really what interesting. It, yeah, what it is is um, imagine just credit score uh, on the blockchain, and it's calculated through your actions on the blockchain. So, mm. yeah, you can essentially get alone in the future it's it's not fully built out yet but essentially ah, yeah. alone based on your credit yeah yeah Just so this is uh, normal you know finances yeah i think the, uh, this is uh, really interesting because I'm, I'm not working at a bank anymore i'm working for a credit uh, information company so this is something that i'm looking into at my regular job so that's kind of <laughs> it's a, it's very interesting for me just uh, professionally as well uh, but in the in the DeFi options DAO case, I think it's um, they would work together with Creda pretty well uh, because what what you use is your credit on the on the DeFi options DAO exchange. If the exchange itself is an ERC twenty token, then your um, balance on the exchange that's something that you could uh, send to other people as a stable coin basically or like it's backed by the credit that's on the exchange yeah I, i'm not 100 percent sure that they're like fully live they've definitely uh theorized about it um they have like some smart contract stuff with their token but i don't know exactly like the fully technicals about how like the actual credit yeah this is we yet. had me, me and the drunk boy had like two hours chat with the sink yeah and i and we were also really stoned at the at the time and he tried to explain this to us oh no 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 oh. it was it shout was a uh, yeah shout out to sink yeah for <laughs> be, yeah still talking to us <laughs> so 
that's project number one. Yeah, I, I, I think I can say this as well. Them. Now, okay, I want to say one thing more, the good thing here about Defection Style. They're, they're really trying to be, like, be one level of abstraction higher than the current uh, def, uh, options trading platforms by allowing anyone to spin up their own liquidity pool with their, with their own pricing, uh, being able to choose which underlying assets you want and everything. So they basically made a spin up your own liquidity pool yeah. for options uh, protocol. Create your hedging, kind of. Yeah. That's cool. So, That's cool. Yeah. May the best uh, liquidity pool win. Yeah, so there are different option pri op options pricing strategies and different models. Uh, so it's it can be very interesting to see which parameters win in the end. And uh, are they all uh, based on stable coins, or can you buy them in different coins as well? This is you can choose like freely. You can choose. Okay, cool. Yeah, right now I think Dai. Um, yeah, it's it's they're making changes like every week, so it's uh, just keep an eye out, and you will see. I think you know the USDC Dai, but uh, you, you can vote. You go like go if, if you go into the community. Say I want to use Dogecoin, then there might be <laughs> someone who wants to join you and uh, vote that proposal through, or you spin up your own pool. <laughs> okay, Cassandra um, Dow. Okay. Yeah, what what is Cassandra Dow? I just saw this. This uh, is definitely new, like really new. Friday, January uh, the fourteenth. So like 15 days ago, that was done. Your fundraise. Yeah. And this is, grand. I think this is easier to explain. But uh, yeah, once again, me and Drunk are, are not the technical ones. We try to take things down to a normal kind of half-retarded level, to, to our level, uh, so that people who are like us can also understand. Cassandra DAO is uh, also a platform where you can make your own. But the thing you make here is not your own options trading pool. It's uh, an ETF. And the first product that they have is their own ETF that they have made, which is uh, based on social uh, engagement. Engagement. Thank you. So it's on Avalanche. And they look at the projects there. And they have, uh, I don't know, they collect data from like Twitter and Discord and all different places in order to kind of try to predict uh, the market. I think the idea is that the social part is something that is more predictive than other um, data points. Yeah. You know, if is the team uh, doxed or stuff like this, they, they just try to see where is the engagement and they see if they can front run the, the market. And... Uh... and can you explain how ETFs kind of work um, for our audience and for me? Because I honestly don't know the technicals behind, like, you know, what is the difference between an ETF and just a normal stonk? Um, and what makes the one more superior than the other in, you know, obviously it has pros and cons. Um, can you explain that a bit? Of course. Um, so an ETF is... Um an abbreviation for exchange traded fund um, traditionally if you have funds you usually send a request to a um, fund hotel or through your bank and a, in a couple of days you you've purchased the fund and you have it in your trad fee um, bank interface um, so an etf is instead a fund that you can buy and sell like a regular stock um, on an exchange but an ETF or an exchange traded fund is not a stock because when you're buying a stock, you're buying a share in one company, Microsoft, for example, or OneHive, which OneHive is not a stock, but you're buying a part of one entity. In a fund, you can have more or less any kind of setup you want, but what you talk about when we're talking about funds is that you're talking weights so maybe you would have in a um, very easy fund you could have 50 percent of one asset one stock 
50% of another stock. And you decide these weights on uh, the strategy you want. So in the Cassandra DAO, as Badgeta talked about, they have a weighted system based on the social engagement of certain products. So if a project has a lot of um, community engagement, it could be weighted higher, maybe 20, 30, 40% in the fund. And if it had a lower social engagement, they would be rated to maybe 5, 10%. All these weights are decided usually either through a uh, fund manager that would sit and say, well, you know, let's take a little bit of that and a little bit of this. But what Cassandra DAO is doing is that they have a um, index, an automated index that they use as a data feed to the, uh, to the fund. Um, so more or less, they have said, we want this amount of different uh, projects in our fund, and we want to allocate their weights in a different um, way. So let's say we would have eight uh, projects in the fund, and then their respective um, to part of the total could range between 20 and 7%, for example. Um, and and um, what you would have in the end is you would have the fund, you would have the strategy, and you would have the weights of the different projects. Then depending on how the different projects, the different stocks, you could say, or the different coins would perform over time, the fund would rebalance itself. So if one project moons and goes out, go, goes up 10, 15 X, you would subsequently sell off a certain amount of the project or the coin uh, as time goes by. So it doesn't take up the whole part of the fund. So it's a, it's a very used concept in TradFi and, and it's starting to get more and more traction here in, in DeFi as well. Yeah, that's going to be really cool, um, yeah, especially with like how DAOs are formed and, and the community around them and how you like come to measure it, um, which is very interesting. I don't know how you guys come up with the value for that. Uh, is it an easy one to explain? Is there like uh, one person plus uh, one comment in Discord equals a, is a one score or something like that? I don't think that uh, Cassandra DAO has um it's more of a black box as of yeah. now what yeah the exact at... uh, weights and stuff is uh yeah. you know tr trust the performance don't uh if if they would have it open source then it would really anyone could do it basically because they could mm -hmm. just just uh, copy the formula basically mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. is heimdall this is the data source, right? Is is yes. this a is this a firm that's used in TradFi in the TradFi space specifically, or is this is it more crypto adjacent? Like the I don't know anything. I Heimdall is more crypto adjacent. Okay. Um, the team behind Heimdall is actually also the team behind Cassandra. Got it. That makes total so, sense. Interesting. So this is ooh, their tool, ooh. though, right? Like this is how they're. Yeah, this is their tool. Okay. Very interesting. I haven't seen this before. I'm gonna have to read through the. I'll drop the medium post on Twitch um, and in the One Hive TV channel on Discord, folks. If you're interested in reading, this is really interesting. There's there's a lot of you know you can have a million different strategies. I think you know it's one thing that we are uh, looking into just more for um, trying to apply trad tradfi concept into DeFi is. Um, another fund that could be very interesting to look into is, for example, can you use have gold exposure in crypto? Uh, can you have silver exposure? Because they are uncorrelated to crypto, and then you could reduce the risk of a portfolio. And the less risk you have, um, uh, the less of a downside you have. Which is, of course, it's a sound investment philosophy. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you can make a fund out of that, or you can make this is the meme coin bag that we're gonna use. Only, uh, only the different Doji coins. 
So Only dogs. You can really do whatever. Yeah. I mean, that would that would be a bad index seeing, you know, all, all the hype in that. Man. Like, shit. You could Just make a one dog. hive index as well. Dog index, yeah, one hive index. I we already have a, an index actually. Um, we just uh, got integrated with uh, Dehive, um, so we're part of the Dehive clusters, which are uh, Gnosis chain indexes. Which are pretty yeah, cool. I think I have one of the one of the clusters. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have. I remember oh, nice. that we do. Yes, nice, nice. If staked. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, it was some nice APR. Usually, um, I don't, I don't look at that much at the what do you call it the numbers at this point. I, I can't. Uh, it doesn't say that much. I feel in the in the end uh, at, in the DeFi right now, all the APRs. Um, I'm more interested in the risk, and since I know the the XDAI chain a little bit more than the other chains, and I have been following One Hive for a while, it's like I really trust you guys. Um, therefore, I really see the long term. Like, uh, yeah. Short term, you can chase APRs. Long term, I'm looking for what's going to be here in a year, two, three. Hundred percent. Yeah, I feel like this space yeah. is figuring this out. You know, um, well, is so. is one hive like four or five years old now? It's 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 getting pretty old. It's not uh, it's not as new as anyone thinks. Yeah, Inception. We we it, was it ETH Berlin. Like was wasn't it like. Or not, because I don't know that. This. Well, so we have that. Uh, I'm pretty that new seed to crypto. I'm not. Yeah, well, you, you and I both relative to I think the folks that were seed founders at OneHive, but um, East yeah, Berlin but, was April fifteenth, twenty twenty one. There's no way. No, this is a few years <laughs> back, right? Like I think ah, that, okay. um, Luke and you know a couple of the folks that had come out of Aragon. That's where they more or less connected on con on conviction voting, and then things grew out of that. I'm pretty sure that's how the seed stories started. You know, Pab did this mm -hmm. a couple months back. We need to get that right, going right. again, though, because I'd like to to nail down. But to your to your to y'all's point, um, you know, I, I think we're hopefully entering into a, a different phase now. I don't know. I, don't, I mean. Are we in a bear market? Who the hell knows? But yeah, I, feel like I like how you got a little quiet when you said that. You're like, oh, are we in bears? <laughs> I don't Dude, know. I, like, I mean, I just, I don't give a fuck necessarily. <laughs> it's like, I feel like if you're here building now, then that's, yeah, that's kind of the point. I mean, I if you're, if we're in bear right now, you should just be buying. That's just, that's the only thing. There's no stable. You should be building, life. Dosh. Not buying. Yeah, should I, be I'm building. building. I'm yes. building yeah. as well. Uh, and I'm buying. And uh, I'm that's buying. good. That's good. Yeah. Actually, speaking of building, we just launched our tournament mode today in GU Stakes, so you guys can check that out. Is there a link? Nice. Right, chat up. Yeah, drop it in chat. Uh, um, uh, no, no, just just GU Stakes, you know, yeah. the huge. Uh, but <laughs> actually, I I wanted to uh, <laughs> I wanted to uh, I wanted you T Wells to pull up uh, the sh uh, ShineDAO dot finance uh, website. Yeah. And go to Cassandra, and I want uh, I want them to explain a little bit about how they do their fundraising, and uh, maybe someone that's listening out in the audience um, has a project in mind, and yeah. they want to head down the Shine Dow direction. Yeah, I was just gonna say if people had to head out at the top of the hour, um, definitely wanted to hear from you guys. How, you know, what's the best way to get involved? If somebody in the audience wanted to to hop in y'all's Discord, yeah, not jump just into uh, jump into yeah. Shine Dow. Talk to me or Badgerton uh, directly. If you don't bite, we're always happy to uh, to welcome one hive people into Shine Dow. Yeah, this is uh, we're still uh, figuring shit out. So uh, the, I think the easiest way is to uh, don't uh, don't try to find so much processes. Just uh, reach out, find a person, and then we'll see. It all kind of depends um, for for DeFi options DAO. They were really really early stage and. Um, they they needed a lot of support from us still uh, still do with cassandra they already had a like a full team they had uh, already most of the things set up uh, so we didn't have to support them with that much so it's 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 uh, i would say from project to project it's going to be very different and it's really really difficult to set up a a process so we really value just m meeting the people for example just joining us for a call like this and just see if uh, if there is some like if, if they are interested in what we are doing and if we are interested in what they're doing right on 
I think it's a really, really, really uh, fuzzy pitch. But I, I guess just join, in, join, join the Discord and just to write something to anyone, and uh, we'll take care of you. Let me post the link to your Discord right, right now. Well, I gotta say, guys, too. I you know I clicked over here and just looking at this news this news uh, page and thought this is cool. Like, um, how do you all source the uh, the stories here? The people, this community contributes them. Uh, the community contributes. Shout out to uh, CF and NXO. Uh, we one one of the one of the guys in our uh, community reads a lot of hacker news. And he said, "Why can't we have a hacker news, but for for DeFi?" And we uh, we built it. <laughs> we built it primarily. That's sweet. Yeah, oh, this yeah. was like a week's work. He's he's raging developer. <laughs> well, he's, he he f like fixes yeah. the bugs real time once he's talking yeah. to them. I, I love That's this awesome. though, man, because That's we need awesome. to have like again, you know, in this stream we're trying to build like a you know, essentially a public good where people DAOs can um broadcast content if they want to, right? So if we if we're slowly building an audience and a DAO has a desire to like take advantage of that, then I mean a curation process, but I'm trying to I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, man, we need to like we, we need to have a DJ a DJ news section, you know. <laughs> so uh yeah we maybe we talk that, that, that's literally this, monday but... morning with with ut wells what well, are you so, talking about yeah well we're, so we're, <laughs> we're, i'm saying there's different types of news right we're talking we, we i do and i go through snapshot stuff it's like governance but literally making a comment yesterday we need like a whole other segment that we can cover all of the all of the drama and all other the stuff other, that's going uh, on uh, right uh, the other like, stuff, yeah. like come on right sure. i mean and so this i just opened this clicked it and i was like man this is awesome so just big ups on that i think it's awesome maybe we can find a way to like collab on something with the, the dj news um yeah i'd awesome. love or i'd love to uh to facilitate we'll do we'll it. do it let's do it let's you guys it. gotta hop on to my uh wednesday stream with yes. uh solar we talk about nfts um and uh, last one, uh, last stream, I think I talked about Irene Dow. I don't know if you guys saw what Irene Dow was all about. No, but, uh, no, no. Oh, yeah, it was, it was the biggest meme on, on Twitter for literally 24 hours. And uh, it was just a picture of a girl. Um, I'm not sure what the Dow was going to be all about. but <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't uh, it? Oh, Eri? No, 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 no. Never mind. Sorry. It went. It went from like a quarter Ethereum per NFT to like three or four Ethereum <laughs> in like the matter of a few hours, and then yeah, people were just shitting on it so hard, and then it dumped <laughs> all the way back down to like one Ethereum. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just meme projects. And I was like, oh no, Cassandra Dow sounds like another girl name. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm just gonna be that. <laughs> Uh, that that would be fun. We're like uh, talking about being legit for an hour, and then it's like, oh, Cassandra Dow. It's just you know, meta. We're just riding the meta wave. It's yeah. yeah. Wave. Did we mention it's just a meme? All of this yeah. is just meme coins. They're just memeing so hard. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, okay. Uh... T Wells is pulling up. T Wells, can you pull up the um, the Cassandra Dow? Like, if you click on the actual. Uh, thing there. Click on the tab. This Which is one, Cassandra right? Dow. Yeah. Try to pull that up. So I got it on the on the Twitch right and now. I think the homepage. No. Uh, no, yeah. no, no. Sorry. Uh, if you go back, like there should be. If you go to this link here, uh, I'm gonna send it to you right now on Discord. Sure. So it shows uh, the token address, like they're kind of their fundraising platform. Got it. Um, yeah. yeah it. it says connect wallet. Yeah, perfect. So I wanted to I wanted the guys to explain a bit about this page, um, what it all means, how you get a project listed, how you guys go through fundraising. Um, I mean, it looks like it's all integrated fairly easy. Uh, can we get a brief overview before we close shop today? Absolutely. And if you guys go on Twitch, you'll see what I'm talking about there. So. Yes. The the wonderful uh, fundraising view yeah, that we're yeah. seeing in front of us. Mm -hmm. How one would get their project here? Well, we are not so much about quantity. We are trying to uh, find proj 
objects and products that we really like. Um, and we take we do take our sweet time in trying to assess uh, assess a project. So with that said, of course, if if anyone is listening and have an idea or have a shell of a of a product or or an idea that they want to manifest for a better word it it always starts in uh, in our discord and they can contact uh, you know they can reach out to us either publicly or or any one of the of the guild members as we call ourselves that's driving this um and we take it from there we're as you can see we've done two projects in the span of a year we're trying to of course experiment and see if we can add a few more but at the same time there's there are so many other launch pads that are just trying to dish out stuff all the time we don't need to be one other launch pad like that um, yeah and we're not it's, this is really a uh, difficult uh, to explain but there is no process i wouldn't even if i wanted to i wouldn't be able to say exactly like how you do things because we're literally building taking one step laying down the next uh, piece of road and then seeing if it works or not um, what we always do is we we have just regular conversations with the team or the person or what, whatever it is to try to assess is this early stage is this something that is uh, you know how much support would they need what are they looking for and what, then we try to see is this something that our community would be interested in, um, in like supporting and incubating um, so we just uh, ask the community. We share, do an you know AMA or similar. Uh, walk through all the all the details. Uh, if there is a white paper, of course, review all those kind of things, and then we just vote. Is this something we want to do? Uh, this is like a suggestion on who will be driving, like leading this, um, and then we vote. If there's a yes, then uh, we go. Awesome. So really, the first step is just. Go into the Discord chat to Badgerton and see where they can kind of align views with the community, essentially, right? Because if the yeah. community aligns with it, then you get, get fun. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's that easy and that difficult. There has been so many <laughs> yeah. good projects that we haven't uh, supported for different reasons. Uh, usually it's like... We, we're not an infinite group of people, so we can only work with uh, this, you know, now I have two projects uh, at the same time. Having three would be, I guess, possible, but then would we, we wouldn't be able to support someone coming up with a project or having just an idea and nothing tested out. That would be too much. So really, um, you would be looking more of the MVP is done um, than... Kind of the the team is fairly autonomous. Um, that that would be a, right? that's that's a perfect scenario. The, yeah. the idea that would be okay, yeah. Yeah. dream. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a, a basically a dream because if if you're like that, then if you want money, then you will find a VC, you will find a bigger launch pad, and you will get the money from there. You will probably go to us if you're looking for more intrinsically motivated uh, people to actually join your community and help you grow and drive things forward it's more that kind of for cassandra dow for example we didn't do uh, the launch they did it on penguin finance like the actual launch pad stuff uh, the reason why they wanted us uh, involved is because they don't want to have only people from there so they want to have people from different parts with different interests and different uh, qualities let's call it like this we don't see any weird thing with having VCs and uh, retail investors. And I think m many projects are seeing the, the, the positive side of having a, a nice balance. That's cool though, because you guys are a Tao VC. So it's not just like a few, like say like five people representing, you know, uh, a big portion of the vote, right? So it'd be your whole community is representing, you know, Shinedown, which then represents the projects, you know? Yeah voting yeah. power or whatever that's really cool that's really cool yeah, yeah. Awesome. we're anyone you know that likes like there's 
there are certain challenges related to trying to build a crypto project that I don't necessarily think is, you know, in a regular, you know, if everyone would be at the same office, kind of classical entrepreneurship building a project. Um, and if anyone is interesting, interested in those challenges and want to, you know, try to tackle them, they're more than welcome to join us and shoot the shit, more or less. We're trying to solve solve problems as we go along, and uh, they're the more the merrier, always. Yeah. You guys have it. Join the Discord. Talk to them. Whoop whoop. There we go. <laughs> well, it's been great chatting with all you got you guys i think we need to have a, another though regularly scheduled one just to chat about the apocalypse specifically um i think we gotta yes. have we gotta have a uh one of those time segments where we just talk about random shit what do you think t-bills <laughs> we have the boy and badger podcast uh you guys are we always do. welcome to shoot the shit we, we should just um, we should just stream that live on our twitch and then we, we... can just join your guys's podcast <laughs> yeah, we should... yeah we can shoot the shoot shit everywhere <laughs> there you go. up and down here and there in and out very cool well um you guys uh i guess in in this case i just one last question about the two you know, projects that, that have launched here um are they are, are the teams generally uh like distributed around the world are they um closer to y'all geographically speaking i'm just curious to know um the community distributed Awesome. Primarily, yeah, with the, all the positive and the and the challenging parts mm -hmm. of it, it's really difficult finding a time with where everyone can yeah. join without being totally degenerate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not possible in crypto. You have to be it's a degen. Just... <laughs> that's all. Solar, no Solar has to endure this so much with our project because <laughs> he lives in Europe, and all our times are like. Starting at eight o'clock, his nighttime, <laughs> and then they go to like three, four in the morning. It's just terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's how, regardless how you turn, the ass is always at the back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everyone's ass always stinks. That's the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, fellas, right thank on, you so right. much for joining us today. Uh, yeah. Thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you, we thank fucking you. love One High. We love everything you guys do. You're yeah. such an inspiration to us. So thanks Keep for having us. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, see you around. Yeah, we're going to hope that you guys uh, pop open a, a Gardens DAO. I know you guys are looking into it. Yeah, if, um, yes, if sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Experiment so with be that, sweet. guys. Yeah, that um, would be awesome. Yeah, you know we're always on the verge to to create that gardens, but there's always something like really pressing that we really <laughs> need to take care of before it's it's very. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're you're talking to the right people when it comes to that. It's like, yeah. oh no, I got to take care of this now, and then the thing that you're supposed to do. Yeah, uh, it's been like a month since you're supposed to do it. So yeah. Yeah, my my specialty is like stakeholder management in my company, but it's I would yeah, it's a completely different world. In uh, you just have to let time do its uh, thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I will uh, I will check all the links you sent us, Dash. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Yeah, and uh, if you. If you want to get some more uh, insight into uh, the news, Dega news, uh, let us know and uh, we'll, we'll get you in touch with the right people. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Sweet. 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 We'll do. Have a, great, have a great week, guys. Shout out to Craig as well. Yeah. Shout out to Craig, Shout out to Craig. in the yes. audience. <laughs> hey, you know, we thought we killed Fucking Craig love the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a three hours. What a fucker! <laughs> yeah, last yeah. Monday it was three hours. I thought it, I thought we lost him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was yeah. biggest tease, Craig. You think he's there and he's not, and then when you don't think he's there, he's there, but it doesn't record. And <laughs> oh. now recording. Oh, okay, bye, bye. Cheers, guys. All right, bye, guys. GM, everybody. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week. Woohoo!
materials.